born again. Does this make you think of DNA? It should. And as you will learn in this study, being born again is not symbolic words on the pages of Scripture. Filled with examples, the King James Bible uses words, phrases, and verses the same number for DNA when discussing topics regarding the body. DNA discovered in 1868 is a relatively new discovery, yet the King James Bible contains numerous accounts of DNA knowledge, revealing the same God who made man wrote the word. First, what numbers are associated with DNA? They are 23 and 46. Both found 23 times in the King James Bible is the phrase, my mother, and the word father, revealing DNA knowledge. How? Because that is the precise number each parent contributes at the moment of conception for a total of 46 chromosomes. To understand how DNA relates to salvation, let us start at the beginning and witness the unfolding of how sin entered the world. In the Garden of Eden, found in the book of Genesis, there is only one law, not to touch or eat from the tree of knowledge. The consequence was death. Interestingly, the serpent spoke precisely 46 words to Eve when he tempted her to eat the forbidden fruit. Ye hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Let us consider for a moment what seed is and how it relates to DNA. Seed is contributed from a father at conception. The scripture mentions two types of seed. One seed is from the first Adam found in the book of Genesis. The other, from heaven, is the second Adam who died for the sins of the world. One is corruptible, the other incorruptible. 1 Peter 1.23 states, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Do you notice the verse number in 1 Peter? It is 23, and the section is discussing seed. This is not by coincidence, but by design. The verse numbers are just as divine as the text. The first prophetic words uttered in relation to the two seed lines is found in Genesis. Genesis 3.15 states, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. In this passage, there is enmity between two seed lines. One is the father of lies, Satan, the serpent. The other is the king of kings and lord of lords, Jesus Christ. All who come from the first Adam, the corruptible seed, are cursed and under the bondage of sin. The second Adam, from heaven, is the incorruptible seed, the word made flesh, the Bible says in John 1.14. We have a choice today of who we will serve, the creator of all or the father of lies. To have entrance into the kingdom of heaven, one must be born from the incorruptible seed. How is all this possible? By being born again. God made man. Therefore, God understands DNA because he created it. It should not be surprising that salvation in the born again experience relates to DNA. Consider the following words and verses relating DNA knowledge in the King James Bible. Each of us is born from the first Adam who sinned. That makes us sinners in the eyes of God. 
The only way for that title to change is through perfection of our flesh, meeting the law's requirements, or an atonement. Unfortunately, the flesh, according to the word, is weak. Romans 8.3 states, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemns sin in the flesh. The word weak, describing the human body, happens 46 times in the King James Bible. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law as Romans 8.3 states, It is our choice to believe in this atonement for our sins or stay the seed of the first Adam. By design, the word law and the word of God are discovered 46 times for DNA in the Bible. How does this relate to salvation? Because Jesus Christ became flesh and fulfilled the law's requirement in our place because our flesh was weak. In conclusion, the seed that makes one born again is the word of God. If you do not trust what the word says regarding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the sins of the world, you will stay the seed of the first Adam. I will leave you with the parable of the seed of the sower. What type of ground will the seed find your heart? Mark chapter 4 verses 2 through 8. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. The meaning of the parable, found in Mark chapter 4, verses 14 through 20. The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended." And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choked the word, and it became unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. These examples of DNA knowledge are but a few of the many discoveries within the King James Bible pages that reveal God's plan to save humanity. DNA is found in the Bible for salvation, damnation, the rapture, and much more. To learn more about DNA evidence and knowledge found in the King James Bible, check out the book DNA, the Bible, and the Second Adam, available on Amazon and Kindle.